Reverend Hill family here today. I want to thank each one of them, Jesus, Brenda, and Ruben, three extraordinary Venezuelan musicians and dear friends. I also want to thank Marines y Carmen, who so openly welcomed the idea for this recital. Thanks to the entire team at Sicardi who made this possible. Thanks to Serpe Candelini, a friend, our Otero Pardo Foundation ally, board member who couldn't be here today. She wrote a magnificent text for the program. Lastly, thanks to our also close friend, Carlos Pelano Martinez, who is here to record the event. The idea for this concert was suggested by my friend Maria Alejandra Bravo, a Venezuelan career diplomat turned cultural manager and entrepreneur. Thank you, Mike. It was Maria Alejandra Miguel who introduced Ruben to us when he arrived in Houston more than two years ago. We simply embraced Ruben. I myself, almost as a mom, because I could not help the see the end of my son in Ruben, a young man living in a distant country away from home. To our immense delight, and before long, listening to Ruben played at our house, the Silva Rabbit's house, other friends' houses, and at every possible recital at Rice University became our joyful normal. This summer, as part of the Spins Competition Prize we went won last year, he was invited to play as a soloist with the Houston Symphony Orchestra. That was when we met Chuito, Brenda, and Sarah, his parents and sister who came for the concert, an all-musician's family. In it, one member more talented and accomplished than the other, as you will soon find out. When we first told Ruben about the idea of this concert, his face lit up. I have so enjoyed playing music in your house, surrounded by the artwork, he said. Mercedes Pardo, my mother, loved music. So did my dad, Alejandro Ote. This is why this recital makes all the sense in the world to us. I am sure my mother would agree. On behalf of the Otero Pardo Foundation, and all of us, thank you so much. Voices interacting with each other, 
uh, very demanding techniques and, and chords of all at once, uh, kind of go, some going up, some going down, some contributing in, in different ways. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting work, uh, which is, of course, preceded by the adagio, kind of the introduction, which is very similar in structure. Uh, one, one thing that, that kind of strikes me about uh, Mrs. Pardo's work is about the structure, the color. You, you'll, you'll see a lot of, of the connections uh, in that way, especially from the first movement to the, to the fugue. It's great to be surrounded by all this color, by this beautiful uh, artwork, uh, all of it, and and I think we're all going to enjoy the acoustics as well. Thank you for being here.
play already those two movements. Uh, next time, I'll, I'll play the next two. <laughs> 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 um, so, as you can tell, the, the whole program, I, I thought about it, uh, incorporating both uh, the classical, the very classical Bach, uh, music of Bach, which Carolina told me, uh, Mrs. Bardo, uh, she, she loved especially this piece that I just performed. I, I wasn't aware that this piece specifically would be so special, but I'm, I'm glad I made the, the right choice. Uh, so I wanted to incorporate that uh, very classical style, that, that language, also with, with the, our very own Venezuelan music, uh, the traditional folk uh, and more popular music. Um, and sort of in the middle would be the Bartok that we're going to perform a little bit. Uh, I would say it's, it's more towards the folk and traditional side rather than the classical. Uh, as, as some of you may know, uh, Bartok, uh, he, he was inspired by the, the, the roots of the music of his country and, and his region. Uh, he, he was, he can be called even the father of ethnomusicology, if, if, you, if you will. Um, he, he really spent a lot of time uh, digging around, investigating, going out there, uh, just to get the, the, the very essence of the Hungarian music and, and, and all of that region. Uh, these these <coughs> sets of so we're going to play a selection from out of the forty-four uh, duets for two violins. Uh, forty-four is a lot. <laughs> uh, so we're going to play something like six of them, which which are some of my favorite, and I think they, they go very well together. Some of them are, are titled uh, Slo Slo Slavic Song, uh, Burlesques, and, and uh, things of that sort. Uh, for our purposes, the, the set uh, that I've made will, will kind of be self-explanatory and self-contained. Uh, so, originally, Bartok intended these works to be somewhat pedagogical. Uh, he, he thought about them, even when he's not a violinist, he, he thought about them for students. Uh, the 44 are separated into four books, uh, which are increasingly, uh, increasingly difficult uh, for all of them. Uh, we're going to be playing number 8, number 12, 35, 43, out of all of them. <laughs> Uh, and they're very fun pieces, very colorful. Uh, I think you'll enjoy them a lot. Thank you. This is my sister. <laughs>
character, uh, which as a heritage from, from uh, Europe, we kind of adapted the, the waltz into a different kind, I guess. Uh, of course, in Venezuela, you also had the ballroom waltz, the, the very elegant, uh, kind of very similar to the Viennese waltz. But in other parts of, of, of the country in Venezuela, it, it was adapted to a more uh, nostalgic, more, more uh, singing, kind of slower tempo uh, feeling for the waltz. Uh, moving on to, to the next piece, uh, the um, Los Fiestos de Moca is a Venezuelan merengue. You might have heard of the uh, merengue from the Dominican Republic, which is in 2 4. Everyone dances to it in, in a rhythm of 5 8, which is the kind of the, the most uneven <laughs> rhythm there is. Uh, which, and, it, and the surprising thing about it is that people dance, dance to it as, as, as much as the other one. Uh, so it, it's very fun in that way. Uh, I remember last time we, we played a, another merengue, yeah, uh, a, a, a very nice lady at the, at the end of the concert approached me and she was like, you know, I've been, uh, I've been studying music for a while, I, for decades, and, and I just could not figure out what, what you were doing. <laughs>
where that music comes from, and our family uh, comes from, from that part of Venezuela, so we played with this, especially with, with a lot of feelings. <laughs> uh, as, as you can tell, there were a lot of fireworks uh, in that piece. There's kind of a, a band in the end where you, the song is just this free to, free to do his thing. Um, the next piece is, is also a little bit that way. Uh, now, the, the previous instrument was the mandolina, and this instrument is going to be the bandola, uh, llanera from the plains uh, of Venezuela, and it has a rather more rustic uh, kind of ground, ground uh, sound, early sound. Uh, Alright, we'll close with this. Thank you.